Okay, and now we have Christian, who's going to talk about Python patch, pro patch projects. You there, Christian? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Loud and clear. Um, great. Go to full screen. Awesome. Uh, just to just to be clear, this is not about uh, snakes, right? No, no, this time not. <laughs> but <laughs> something completely different. So I'm not presenting any any cool library or like the great talk now on Kubernetes on a very technical level. It's more on an overview or managerial level. So it's a bit of a different talk. So be right. with me. I'll leave it to you then, Christian. Yeah, thank you. So be with me. Hope it's interesting. So first off, I want to say that Trayport again is very proud to be uh, a sponsor three times in a row now of your Python. We feel this is very important to be part of the Python community to contribute and also use the Python community, of course. Yeah. So uh, the, to the title of my talk, why should you consider, or why might you may consider getting a Python pet project? So this is basically something that came out of my own experience. So the sample size is n equals one. Um, however, I would like to share some of my experiences here. So of course, our legal department also wanted to have a slide. So maybe skipping over this. Um, yeah, to who, who am I? Who, who is giving you the talk? My name is Christian Burger. I'm heading the development department in Austria for Trayport. Um, and I also have a developer uh, background. However, I started uh, probably in the middle, <laughs> in the dark ages, uh, in 1997 as a C++ uh, programmer in a telecom company, a telecom provider company. And yeah, uh, worked all kinds of positions nationally, internationally, in, in, in China, in the US, in Germany, Switzerland, and of course, in my beloved Austria. Um, yeah, I've been working uh, in team leadership, project leadership roles since 2006, becoming department head in 2017. Um, I, while I started uh, my career, everything was waterfall, um, at least in companies I was working on, so waterfall projects. Um, I was really uh, excited to jump on board the HR bandwagon in the mid 2000s, and ever since, I really like doing this and also like uh, to have my teams at best self-empowered, of course. Um, yeah, um, maybe to the title again. Uh, oh, nice and, and dandy, but uh, let's focus on the title at hand. So uh, initially uh, with a pet project, there are some negative connotations, obviously. Um, if you look at the, at least that's the definition I found, it's not very positive, a project activity or goal pursued as a personal favorite rather than because it's generally accepted as necessary or important. And uh, this is a stock picture. It's not a picture from our company. Um, um, in the past, probably everybody has run across uh, something like that when uh, your boss, your department head, your uh, whatever is really excited about a project, but you really think it's actually not really necessary and only distracts you from your, from your work. So I don't want to about, talk about these uh, pet projects. But maybe give you a little bit insight on how I came across this. It's, um, so the, the problem statement, at least for me, was uh, being promoted to a leadership pro, uh, position, um, or and in our case, entered uh, the company in the development managerial position, so managing several teams, um, but also having a dev and tech background. So I really, I'm really excited about the, uh, new technologies uh, playing around with him with them, toying around with them, and also be conscious of um, that we we do have, of course, as any company, uh, tight deadlines, uh, have to be really quality conscious, and uh, as a, a manager coming from a tech background, the urge is really strong to be actively involved and, and go into the code and, and help, help your team. Um, while this is all uh, Fine. This might lead, might lead uh, to problems. Uh, there might be some negative side effects. I'm not saying it's generally bad practice, but it might have some uh, negative side effects. At least some that I encountered over the course of my career. Um, when you do get involved into the product code, there will be uh, a set uh, tight deadlines. There might be an urgent support case, or why you think it's an urgent support case. There will be a strong urge to work. Um, basically 
around uh, around the rules. So because you set up with your HR, uh, with your teams, with your HR coaches, you um, will have set up some rules, ground rules, processes for review and, and whatnot. However, um, in a managerial position, you might have the, the possibility to work around that. And that's not very good, of course. So this will set a very bad precedent because then the rules should apply to everybody, not uh, that there are uh, different a set of rules applying to different set of people. That's not a good um, uh, precedent, basically, that you would set here. Um, also, because you are probably not paid uh, to work in a uh, um, managerial position in order to code, but more to work on a strategic level. So we will have to, in essence, have two masters, then which would lead to high amount of stress on your end. And stress level on our development uh, managerial level is quite high <laughs> from the beginning. So that would really add up to it. So that's also something maybe to avoid and a pitfall to avoid. Um, also, I mean, in the end, uh, you hired developers and testers to develop and test. And um, usually they should be better than you in doing so. If not, then you might have a very big ego or you are actually better than you should invest in the recruitment and training of your developers and testers, of course. Uh, UX engineers and so on are also included in this. Um, the loss of focus is also quite likely because you're all caught up in, in technical discussions. You also might be the uh, the final decision maker in all these in, in a lot of technical decisions, and that's actually something that um, can be quite uh, disenchanting and or hurtful to your uh, uh, lead uh, engineers or your engineers because they are the ones that should uh, be the ones that are in charge of of, of these decisions. Yeah. Uh, moving on, um, this is maybe, but you still want to have an outlet uh, for your, all your uh, ideas and, and creativity and also want to be, uh, want to contribute maybe. So maybe a pet project uh, could be for you uh, in order to, for example, experiment uh, with new ideas. So um, for example, for in my case, it was uh, behavioral, uh, behavioral uh, testing. Um, uh, behavior different testing that is something that I was very curious about so but I didn't want to uh, put this into the, the, the protocol right away but I had um, basically my uh, playing field where I did this just to get a feel on how this would work and how it would work in practice uh, also in order to feel the processes yourself um, okay <laughs> reminder for the daily um, feel the processes yourself. I mean, it's all nice that uh, you, you have created the, the, the most ingenious uh, review process. However, it's really uh, taking up unnecessary amount of times maybe, or it's really great and then you should also feel it basically. Yeah? That means um, writing something on paper is one thing. On the other hand, is experiencing it yourself. And uh, not the least for a purely selfish reason, you want to remain uh, technically savvy, at least on the, maybe not on the level that your team can be, but uh, at least that you can know what's, uh, what, what are the latest and, and greatest packages, uh, know the programming languages, know the problems uh, of your team, and also retain your own knowledge and maybe even expand it. In my case, using a Python pro project, it really expanded my knowledge because Python was uh, very new to me when I started in my current uh, position. Yeah, um, moving on. Oh, that wasn't too much. No, that's the right one. So, anyway, so, uh, however, uh, as is already outlined before, you have to be very careful with something like this because this can really draw you in and basically suck you into a big black hole of, 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 of additional work. Um, so what would be a good idea to consider is, of course, this project should have some sort of benefit, not only to you, but maybe also to others, maybe even ideally offload your developers from uh, menial tasks and, and automation could be, uh, tools could be a good uh, venue for that. You should be a role model. So, I mean, if you expect uh, your team to live up to certain standards, you, you should also uh, do so. Otherwise, it will be kind of... Um, yeah, would be not not setting a good precedent. Um, you have to set the right priorities because um, you might be drawn away from it um, at any time. You might be drawn in a meeting. You will have, uh, of course, you should 
the main focus is uh, giving the right tools and resources to your team. So this always takes precedent, of course. And also, uh, then, then uh, you have to be, of course, as a manager, also aware of what your product is doing, what is the, the business impact, and so on. This, of course, has to be priorities because you might uh, be pulled, uh, might be, um, uh, you might want to over prioritize your this side project. So actually, this is something you have to continuously watch yourself that this is not not the case. Um, also, what's not uh, what's a quite an anti pattern is uh, you might have a, a great idea for a, a side project, and then you lose interest and you dump it on a engineer's desk. That's also not going to make you very popular. Uh, it will basically make you very unpopular and uh, will not uh, help you uh, usually. You can, of course, if you're really, really convinced and uh, about the benefit of your side project. This is something you, over time, you can uh, add other people to it, so at least they know what what is the, what is what it's doing. Yeah, um, yeah um, of course, cat pictures. Um, uh, how did I end up with a pet project? How how do you, did you come across it? So I mean, there were some of the ideas that are already outlined. Uh, it most stru struck me the similarity to how I ended up with. Uh, two cats um, or our pets. So first, uh, our kids, <laughs> they wanted to have cat, one cat to play and cuddle. And uh, they will really, if you, if you have kids, then you know how insistive they can be. They did one year of badgering, bickering, uh, my wife and me. And then finally, uh, after one year, we gave in. We said, OK, that's, we give up. Um, <laughs> we buy your cat. Um, we got wild promises. We. They will always be cleaned. Uh, they will always be fed. We will do everything. We go to the vet and, and whatnot. So, um, so going to the vet, he told us, okay, one cat is maybe good, but it should have two. We should have rather have two cats, so they have company. So then we buy two cats, and yeah, if, if you can imagine, uh, so after about a half year, uh, the cats are taken care of ex almost exclusively by by my wife and me. And uh, so the kids can focus on um, cuddling and uh, making cute cat pictures, like the one in on this slide. Uh, nonetheless, I'm, I'm very happy to have the pets, of course. Uh, so uh, it kind of reminded me on, on how I ended up with a pet project. So in the company before uh, we uh, were bought by, by Traypod, we introduced back then a new ticketing systems. and. Also, the grand expectations and uh, what, is, what we can achieve with it. Then, um, of course, uh, we had I had to badger. In this case, I had to do it. The other departments uh, to okay, we really need this, and we need this and that expectation. Uh, we need this and that um, functionality, and uh, people were sold. Then we found that, of course. Um, just using the ticketing system itself will not solve everything. So. And talk with our consultants. They told us, "No, you need this and that plugin and integrations." Yeah, and then um, since I wanted really this uh, project to succeed, and it was my first project uh, here, uh, was to uh, I started writing one integration, two integrations, and this basically continued on its own. And for me, it was really a good introduction to using Python, and I really appreciate having having done that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so again, situation when I started, I was fairly new to, completely new to energy trading. Uh, I was uh, fairly new to Python. I had one very small project before I joined. Um, I knew the ticket systems in question, uh, at least as a, on a user level. Uh, but I was uh, acutely aware of how much aut automation can help us, especially when you're a small team. I mean, uh, the more you do manually, uh, this also applies to, to bigger teams. Uh, that's uh, usually um, not something you want to do. You want to have to automate as much as possible so that people can focus on what they're here to do to create cool new products and uh, not spend time on, on menial tasks. Yeah, some constraints that I set myself uh, when picking this up, of course, is sa some of the same that uh, uh, I outlined before is that I want to use, uh, if I'm doing something like that, first, of course, I need to be aware that I have to always be able to, to drop it when uh, the, the need comes. 
Um, we I wanted to use the same tools and a uh, very similar tech stack from uh, what our product uh, implementation is doing, um, just because I wanted to be able to uh, basically <laughs> experience firsthand what it means to use this or, or that um, uh, product that is in that library. I also wanted to run the same processes, so that means uh, merge requests, reviews, tests, uh, unit tests, and so on, not uh, exemplified, and try to be a role model, basically, also to, for example, uh, to our engineers on new hires. Um, of course, one of the ideas was to make this ticket tool introduction successful. Um, and of course, we, I'm not writing this on my own. It's, there's also other people, uh, consultants, that helped us uh, getting this off, off the ground. Um, so, but I still wanted to make a contribution uh, and create automations uh, that make our lives easier and not necessarily harder. That's very important and very easy to miss. Um, some, uh, and I think that almost concludes my, my talk. Um, some of the lessons I learned along the way, for me, it was really a deep appreciation of, of Python. Coming from background C, C++, a little bit of Java, and that being years ago, um, I really appreciated how fast it is, and how easy it is actually to set up uh, and, and get a complex task done using Python. And that's really awesome. Some, I mean, we're skipping ahead here to, to this, this, this line, Flask and requests, that re they really helped me getting the application out very fast and uh, running an HTTP server with uh, very little effort. Um, also, appreciation for what it means for unit testing and equation testing, especially in a management position, you always uh, being asked, okay, why is this feature taking this or that long, or why is this effort so high? Uh, one of the reasons is, of course, uh, you want to guarantee a certain quality level. And this, you can, it's not the only way, but uh, one of the ways to do it is, of course, to uh, have good and solid unit tests and integration tests and other test stages uh, as much as possible. And those uh, working on those can be a lot of work. It can also needs upkeep. It needs uh, improvements. So there is a lot of work for that. But the benefit, of course, outweighs the cost usually. Um, for me, it was also using the project as a test bed for new tools and processes. So uh, before basically making other people suffer uh, for my ideas, I wanted to see how do they look like, how do they feel like in, in one of these small tool projects. Um, also, I mean, this is uh, quite obvious probably to most of you, but however, I really uh, felt that uh, spending some time to uh, create automatic deployments really, really pays off over time because you then basically essentially have only to worry about doing this once, uh, investing time in, in Docker and Docker files and um, also also can help here and also make you more independent so you don't have to worry about uh, deployments anymore or environmental issues. Um, it makes me. It made me really appreciate good documentation, and uh, I think it's uh, it's it's yeah, good documentation takes its time. That's I think the most uh, the best uh, takeaway I, I got from that. And uh, last but not least, for me was uh, staying humble myself and uh, learn to trust uh, my team, and uh, maybe it may also help you to trust uh, your team with their decisions. And I think. Um, that's all I had. So looking forward to your questions. Thank you so much, Christian. Um, we do have a few questions. Yep. So first of all, uh, how long do you spend writing code uh, versus non-coding work as a tech lead? Oh, that's that's a difficult question. <laughs> it, I think it depends. So it depends on uh, what what are the immediate uh, thing uh, thing to, do. and uh, sometimes I would also take some uh, maybe in the evening take some time if the things have quieted down to to write some code. It's very hard to give a number, I must say, because it, it fluctuates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. 
But if um, you want to know more details, of course, you can uh, visit our, our booth and uh, we can maybe direct message me. Cool, cool. Um, what kind of pet projects do you recommend for someone without much time? Now, I found <laughs> it's also very hard to give you a general ask, answer, but I found automations, uh, for example, of office processes quite quite handy because this is something that usually has a, a immediate benefit. So somebody, some some repetitive work will be replaced with something uh, that's good, and usually those are not big tasks. So it means mm -hmm. you can you can uh, drop it. You can. This is basically the, the main constraints. You must be able to to drop it and. And not having people wait for it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's 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 hard to make a, a generalization, mm -hmm. but uh, in my case, it just landed itself because there was not like somebody immediately waiting for it because anyway mm -hmm. we had the team uh, working it, but I, I made some add-ons basically, and um, that are being used. So um, yeah, if for example, and what's not good if if there's for example your dev team waiting on on something like that or you have you're blocking somebody. I think this mm -hmm. I would definitely exclude. I would say in a negative way. Yeah. You talk about like usual things that you have to do, but you can automate in the meantime, so you can still do them manually, even though you haven't automated them yet. But yes, yeah, just... yeah, something like that. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that. yeah. Cool. Um, in your role, does a tech lead need to code to be a good tech lead? Oh. Hmm. I'm not sure. So I think I think not really. I don't think so. But I think you should have an understanding, uh, so of uh, of what your people are doing, and, mm -hmm. and uh, basically have a respect for what your people are doing. And for me, coming from from a dev role, it kind of meant that okay, I wanted I wanted to feel this. I wanted to feel uh, feel I I contribute. But I don't think it's a necessity. So I think it's the necessity is basically that uh, you you are able to to trust the teams with, with their, their decisions mm -hmm. and appreciate what they're doing. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that's all the questions we have. So thank you so much for the for the talk, Christian. You're welcome.